Macri's mom is refuting much of what her daughter told us on this platform last week. I never have a mother who me and tell me get up every day and tell me say she didn't love me. And wanted to tell her side of this very sad story, but wasn't able to come due to unforeseen circumstances. Fortunately for us though, we will hear from Shauna K. Burns from the social work unit at the University of the West Indies who brings a professional perspective to this issue. Where is the man who gave us this 10 million views monster? Alangola. Jabooks will be here Alangola. to tell us. You sheltered me from Ken Booth talks iconic musical journey. That's the title of the Rocksteady Icons biography. And meet the producer of Tommy Lee's latest song. And when he brings the video for the song, but why does he call himself Damage? Is he damaged? All coming up, plus this week's E! News reviews and more. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Winford Williams. We'll be back. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. And we're back with uh, stories making our e news and reviews for this week. Aside from his first performance after being released, the world had also been waiting on what new music from the Gargamel Bujabantan would sound like. Well, the wait is over, and on Friday, the Gargamel released his first official single in over a decade Country for Sale. Country for Sale! In his last interview with us, Shaggy spoke of his collaboration with Noah Power. Well, the visuals reached the desks of Onstage TV, and we share it with you right now. This is Money Up. Me money up, me money up this season. Me money up, me money up this season. You know no money, you know see say we not even. Go get your money, money up this season. All right, so those are the stories making our e news and reviews for this week. Stay with us right here on stage. Still to come, meet the producer of Tommy Lee's latest hit single. He brings the video for that song. But why does he call himself? Damage. Where is Jabooks, the man who gave us this 10 million views monster? He'll be here to tell us. And later, Ken Booth, the legendary Rocksteady icon. But first, Shauna K. Burns from the Social Work Unit at the University of the West Indies brings a professional perspective to the mackerel issue after the break. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. Macri's mom is refuting much of what her daughter said about her on this platform last week. Every time I remember when I go to church, I see other people out there with their mother up that body, their mother it hurt me. So I never get it from my own mother. It hurt me. <laughs> and wanted to tell her side of the story. Mr. Rainford, if you want, you forget in touch with me too because it's two and three sides to a story. In fairness to her, we had to say yes to that request. Well, due to unforeseen circumstances, Ladisha's mom was unable to make it. But we are happy to have right now on our stage. Shauna K. Burns, an instructor in the social work unit at the UWI, University of the West Indies. And uh, she brings a professional perspective to the mackerel issue. Right now, right here on our stage. <laughs> Shauna Hi, K. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Good to have you. Thank you for having me. All right. So what explains the distance between the two stories? Um, your view? <laughs> I think one of the first things we need to look at is each person carries their own journey with food. Mm. And so arguably we've heard from Macri Ladisha's point of view and only through uh, social media posting have we heard from mom. It is indeed, in fact, uh, mm. you know, truly sad that she couldn't make it today. But I think 
one of the things that you understand is if something happens right now here with us, Winford will see it from one point of view yes. and Sean Kay will see it from one point of view. I have no doubt that somewhere in between is really what happens. And I think if you are taking uh, Ladisha's point of view and you're looking mm -hmm. at a young girl figuring out her own hormones, her own body, her own changes, life is experiencing and it feels one way. For mom who is desperately trying to make herself the best mom she could be, mm -hmm. take care of her children and not starve, frankly, life has a different feel and protecting what could account for the distance is yes. just my own point of view. And I mean, we talk about something called personal environment in social work. And what you're really looking at is what is mom's community? What is mom's workplace? What is all of these different things that has happened? And what is Ladisha's, you know? And for right now, during this thing, you're looking at somebody who is engaged right now in the awesomeness of popular culture and mm. social media and maybe Ladisha. Ladisha, yes. And what will drive that. So I think different motivations um, can call for something. And unfortunately, you know, mom might have heard Ladisha talking from her own pain because I do believe what we saw last week was real pain. So both could be telling the truth, you're saying? I think so, absolutely. Um, and both could be fabricating, right <laughs> both could be absolutely <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. um, because people do have their own interpretations of the exact same events. The experience she had, yes. Adisha, mm -hmm. at 12 getting pregnant, absolutely. a child at 13. To what extent that, would that impact her, her behavior? But um, Winford, let's think about that. If, yes. if, you, if you as a man, had your first child at 13, how would it have changed you and the course of your life? Similarly, we can speak about Ladisha in that same way. Um, I cannot imagine that any daughter as bad mm -hmm. as we may have put her to be or as bad as people say, oh, she must be, would have wanted to have a child at 13. You're talking about school interrupted, fun interrupted, just the ability to just lime and chill and be mm -hmm. with your friends must be, it's, it's hard and it must change the, f the, the, the trajectory of your life. But wouldn't that be demanding change in mommy? Absolutely. And wouldn't she too be under pressure Ab <laughs> with this development? Absolutely. And, and again, we're talking about what does that mean for everyone in that situation? Because no mommy is just like, look at my baby mm -hmm. who has now had a baby. And what does that mean? And how does it change her ability to provide for her children, her ability to be a rock for her family? So could it be that mommy was mm -hmm. struggling with, with that reality, that new reality that, is, I that she was faced so. with? I absolutely think so. And may, and may, have, been, may have made mistakes? I think so. I think one of the things that we often forget, and I myself have done it, um, is our parents are just people. Yes. And when you, when you had this child <laughs> during the teenage years, maybe now the millennial mom or the 2019 mom has a literature to just look at and kind of skim through and say how to be a good disciplinarian as opposed to people who may not have those resources. Okay. As, 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 as a father yourself, you can look and say, you didn't get a handbook when you got the child. And you didn't get a handbook right throughout the teenagers, teenage years, which may have been the hardest. And so it really, I think, threw that dynamic off. And when you introduce concepts like cultural response yeah. and, and, and cultural behavior and social media, which is even a newer phenomenon, you really throw it a whole lot into the gumbo. Yeah, a lot of people weighing in. <laughs> Absolutely. On the, on the issue. Yeah. Which, again, a mom would be struggling with. Absolutely. You know, everybody out there wanting to put in their two cents in the discussion. And, and, and a and, lot of people uh, feeling that they have the right to, because you, we do realize that mm -hmm. when we put ourselves out there, quote unquote, in social media, a lot of people feel that you open up yourself for my opinion. If yes. you didn't want to, you wouldn't have posted it there. Okay. And so you open yourself for my judgment. So to, to, to Ladisha, you say what? You say what to her about rebuilding a relationship with her mom and 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 yeah to talk to both for me talk um, to, to, to the daughter 18 yes. year old ladisha and to her mom uh about rebuilding 
um, well, I think if I could say to Ladisha is, my darling, fame, yes. glory, and success are awesome, awesome things. But family might be one of the things that, <laughs> like it or not, yeah. is there for a longer period. And at the end of the day, when popular culture will build you up and spit you out, you are harder to press. Not that sometimes we all don't have those uh, situations where family also does that, but they are the rock that we can go back on. And at the end of the day, mommy is mommy. Mm -hmm. And whatever our opinions are, because you see, Winford, it's very easy for us to throw stones when nobody's looking our, in our direction. I don't think in my whole thing that Ladisha was saying anything that people never did say. If you watch dance hall, and I'm not blaming dance hall, absolutely not. If you watch Hollywood, movie, anything, Tech people man is a thing, is a yes. thing where we do. So if you're looking at a little girl who is exposed to popular culture, and her favorite artist, I tell her, say, yo, tech people man. And her favorite male artist, I tell her, say, a girl for a tech people mm -hmm. man. Then me for come on social media and say, oh, tech people man, where the hype for? Mm -hmm. what, where the hype for? Where we are going so far? Um, but she outlined some very awesome things. And I think if people looked beyond the comedy and the fun, and even look beyond the pain, what you're looking at is a young woman expressing to do better and expressing to be better. And I'm saying, Macril, honey, if you want to go to Edna, apply. Okay. Apply. Edna Manley, reach out to her, but there are requirements for do, to do that. Mm -hmm. So if it is, you have to pull back a little and go on to a one C sex subject, then get it done. And she said to you last week that she's willing to drop this entire thing to go to school. Yes. And I hope she does. And I say to you, empower, because everybody have a 15 minutes of fame. And if it is that after the 15 minutes done, you can continue to rise, then do that. So oh. mommy, mm -hmm. I say, mommy, forgive your baby. Yes. I know she hurts you. Um, but there is a way in which, as a woman, you can understand that this life will do these things to you. And as much as it can, this is the same girl you pushed out years ago. And this is the same baby you love. So when you're ready, when you're ready, come together, find each other. Because mm -hmm. all of Jamaica, win for you, win me, we can make all the conversation we want to make. Yes. But it's those two people have to be with each other for a longer time. Are there any blame that we should... We should put on the social environment. Absolutely. Our social <laughs> truth in Jamaica. Absolutely, because I was, I was going to say if there's any blame to be put, I think a fair amount of it can be placed on us. Us as a society, yes. us as a nation, us as a world. Um, because if we think about it, what would make a 17, 18-year-old girl go out and realize that if I post on Instagram, say me take people, man, that is a sure and easy way to start them. Mm. Because I that we like. And we were the ones who liked it. We shared it. We talked about it in classrooms, in the workplace. You see this little girl I talked about? And we fed into this thing. We gave her ads. And, and, and I think all of those are an awesome thing in terms of empowering a young woman to make a life throughout, but then halt on the judgment of this young girl halt on the judgment of mommy because these are people who are relating to their environment and us how big is this issue though since this yes i've heard from so many people mm -hmm. walking up to me yes and saying boy you know it's right across the society don't stop it downtown don't put it just in the ghetto or among the poor it's uptown yes as a social worker mm -hmm. How widespread is this? How big a, a problem is this in Jamaica? It's a huge problem. And a, a problem that I think we often blind ourselves maybe out of trying to protect our own sanity. It is. And some of us may have the resources to cover it up a little bit more. Send them off to Miami to mm. stay with their auntie, to quiet yeah. it down, move them to schools, do all of those things. Um, but it is a massive issue. And we see it. We see it every day in our news articles when another uh, child or another teenager or a young person is found dead or we hear about abuse we hear about it all the time and abuse is now coming from both older men and older women so i really don't like this conversation mm. of man of this and man of that and a man of abuse the little girls the truth is women are also doing it but oftentimes if a young man gets him boss boss him ducks with a bigger man we lord him i would tell him yes you ought. 
Yeah. And where if it's a girl, we say, oh, no, that's a shame. This issue becomes something that we need to take on on a national level. We need to take it on on a policy level. We have to now stop living by the your business or your business, pull up your bootstraps and move, and take it on as a national emergency. Shana Kay. Winford. So good to have you. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming in and sharing so much with us. Alrighty. We're very grateful for it. All right, there you have her in this segment, Shauna Kay, and she's, of course, a social worker. Stay with us, still to come. Remember this? Angola. Where is Jabooks now? He'll be here to tell us. And I would keep Ken Booth talks iconic musical journey in his biography and meet the producer of Tommy Lee's latest hit. All coming up. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. The producer of Tommy Lee's latest hit single. But the story behind the rhythm for that song is much more than meets the eye. The producer's name is Dwayne Parkinson, aka Damage. Damage. Who brings with him to our stage the video for the song. Bless up, Mr. Wayne. Blessed love, man. Damage. Yeah, man. Wow. Explain that name for us. Well, you know, I have that name since birth. I used to play football at school, prep yes. school. I got that name as a top striker, damaging, scoring a lot of goals. Mm -hmm. But um, unfortunately, my football, I didn't pursue much in the football. So I just, you know, hence the name, music, damage music. Okay, damage music. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so you've been working with Tommy Lee for a long time? Or? Yeah. About four years. Four years? Four years now. And this is your first hit with him, is it? Um, the biggest hit. Not the first hit. The first hit was um, Savage Life. Okay. Yes, which it was two years ago. So what else do you have on your belt in terms of success? Um, Shano. Mm -hmm. Last days, I was the one who revived back Shano's career. Damage music. Also yes. did a single with a Ghanaian artist in Africa which went number six on the world billboard chart. Okay, yes. you have billboard success? Yes, I have a billboard. World billboard world chart. Billboard. So, which means that it was popular in many yes, countries. Yes, popular in the world, on yes. the world chart. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. so, so you're one of the unsung heroes of yeah, dance song you know, producers? Got, producers don't really get their they credit. They don't get a lot of credit and have, mm -hmm. have worked with a lot of young talents and even bring talents to the forefront, same way. Talents from a lot of these Montego Bay names you've been hearing. I've been working with them from the underground. Yes. So it's just that they develop, find, and move on with different managements. Same. But if you check out the core of them, history of their music, I'm the first producer who actually I give them the strength. Okay, so name some people you worked with TJ, Up Top, mm -hmm. Squash, um, Tommy Lee, Rhyme Minister from Montego Bay as well, um, Shano, Massacre. Um, Beanie Man, Deep Jai, Jamil, you know, lots of, lots of names out there. Right is now. there such a, as a producer, I need to ask you this, yeah. is, is, is there such a thing as a, a hit formula? Well, yes, it has to be a hit formula because if you're a producer and you're um, <coughs> creating a special type of beat mm -hmm. with the sound, when you deliver that beat to the artist, it gives them inspiration. Okay. So it tends to necessarily be a hit most of the times. So you're, you can just say, this is going to be a hit and it is? Well, most times, because I, I, I do take time in consideration in my music. And okay. When I'm building a beat, I think about the artist. I it, think about the sound of the artist that I want the beat to go with. Okay, I just, to me. Not a random beat and just say, this artist. Mm -hmm. If I'm composing a beat and I want to do a juggling, the list of artists keeps the melodies play, plays in my head. Oh, their melodies? Yeah, their and, melodies. And their styling and yeah. how they deliver and yeah. so on. So I would like reach out to them and say, yo, I have this beat, you know. I feel if you sing about this, or, you know. Okay. And majority of the time it works. What about the fans? 
Do you see them too when you're creating a beat? Well, I, of course, the fans are there because, you know, you want the music, the substance to live on and, you know, the fans are the ones that root for the music, see yeah. me? So, I think about the fans, what do they like? Yes. And the vibe, sometimes we try to give them a better vibe than the vibe which is actually out there. Oh, so you're always aiming to change, yeah, to change. bring freshness to freshness, the space. Yes. All right, so let's go to the video for the song now, because yes. I understand it's trending, right? Yes, it's trending number one. Number right one now. already? Okay. Right now, as we speak. All right, let's go to, to it, right? You know, it's a blessing that show like green on for me. Give me the oil, them are just a sister, them can't stop me. Tommy Lee Sparta, reflective, introspective, inspirational. Yes, man. Wow. You yeah, told him this? Yeah, man. Different you men. groom him into that? Yeah, man. I get an inspiration last year. Yeah. Last year, I was going through a depressing mode when I created the beat. Oh. So when I created the beat, he was one of the first person that came to mind because been through the years, we've been getting a lot of fight, you know? We've been working together and, you know, there have been less results and less, you know, positiveness. Oh, so your depression was caused by fights in the, no, in the well, base? I've been working with the artist Tommy Lee um, since for four years before yes. he recently inked a deal. Mm -hmm. So I was like a manager slash a producer. I was doing bookings and all those stuff. Okay. But those were the time where he was been running in with the laws and, you know, yeah, all yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, you know, at those times it was like a bittersweet moment. Music out there, but no money coming in, no, no shows. Cops turning down stage shows, no appearances, nothing anywhere. So it was like depressing because you're doing oh. something and not seeing any results, you know? So his struggles were transferred to you in a sense. In a sense. And caused depression for you. As well. And, and, and how did you cope with that? Well, I cope because I believe in him. I believe in the artist mm -hmm. from day one. And what I did, I tell him, you know, probably we're at a stage where we need to evolve. Okay. We need to evolve and we know, probably we need to express ourselves more in the music of what we're going through. Not just what okay. is nice or what is running the street, but actually real life experience which can inspire people and let people look and say, you know, so them, you know, the artists say I go through a lot. Ah, that's, that's yeah. interesting because sometimes when the way the thing I go on, it sounds like everything all right. Yeah. The man does I go on some way. Yeah, well, as musicians, yeah. they all get fight struggles. Yes. Because as a young producer myself, I've been facing a lot of struggles in the business. I've paid artists to Vice and married him. And up till this day, I've not getting back the song nor the money. I've been loyal to other artists over eight years. And when it's my time to get like a vocals or anything, it's nothing. So oh. those things sh show me a lot of signs in the business, you understand? But you're not giving up? No. You're it's still steadfast? Yes, man, I'm passion, my dream, man. Same. I'm thinking only make you strong and you know, know what you really want. Yes. And what you're going for, you know? But we, we do get support, we do get strong support from the music industry, see me? And we just use a small support and strive, you know? Okay. Give me a, good, a quick summary of your background. Damage. Well, I'm from Montego Bay. Mm -hmm. um, I was born um, in Corner Regional. I went to Herbert Marston. Mm -hmm. Left Herbert Marston at grade nine, went to Bel Air High School. Um, finished up Bel Air High School and um, that's when I went back to Montego Bay and started music, created a studio, have a studio. It's been over 10 years, but officially eight years now, which I'm registered and started to work. Montego Bay's rise in music is yes, not man. just the guys at the front now. Producers are also yes, rising. Yes, man, producers, we are one of them are create. The, the yeah. beat what, what, what inspire the artists them for rise too. Yes. Because, you know, we break the ice with Tamale. And then now you have the TJ, now you have the squash them. You have all of, all of them influential and them career at the early stage. Yes, Mr. Williams, I want to give some strong shout out to some people which have been influential in my career as a producer that believes in my music as selectors, yes. like Boom Boom, Rooksy, Banka, yeah. you know, whatever it is, they've been supporting me from day one playing the music. Mm -hmm. And also I want to big up Cara because she has, I've known her before I've started producing. She have helped me, you know, guided me through, through the right Publicity track, work and right, so right track, along She's doing a great job. Great job, Carol. along with Kim Media House. Bless. Bless up the whole mobile, you don't know. We are continuing to do the right thing, keeping more music, positive music, more it's coming. Look out. 
Mm. Damage. Respect, man. You know damage, brother? No, man. We damage the music with hits, man. Yeah, man. That's it. Damage mm. the space with hits. Yes, man. That's the way to put it. Thank you, sir, for coming yes, and sharing with us. And give us All the very best out there. Bless, yes, bless up. Bless up. All right, so there you have him in this segment. Damage. All right, still to come. Where is Jabuk? And later, Rocksteady legend Ken Booth is on our stage retracing in a book his iconic journey. 54 years and counting. We'll be back. Just to help you back again. Pull a shirt on my damn shirt. Tight jeans with the damn clocks. On the road we are rough, rough. When the gin caught the cup, that will pop up. All right, in this segment, we're going to do a little bit of a where are they now? In this case, the man we're talking about gave us this 10 million views monster. Jamooks, right now, right here on our stage. Yes, sir. Well, man, bless yes. up, welcome. Yes, the man. So, you know, you, you just need to just jump in right away and just jump into that. Well, um, where have you been, sir? Angola? <laughs> well, you know, I, I was next door Angola, yeah. for real, yeah, because um, you have this place named Satame. Mm -hmm. It's a Portuguese island on the, on the, on the um, coast of, um, on, like, next door to Angola, you know what I mean? And that place now, I am the first reggae artist to go and sing reggae music there. So, you know, um, I think that's a great thing for me in reggae music, you know? So you live there for how long? Oh, uh, um, well, I live there, I live on that island for like two months. For you know, two months? I spent six months in Africa and okay. go other places like Nigeria, Gambia, Senegal. Oh. You know. So they called you or you wanted to yeah, go? Yeah, they called me. They've been calling you? Yeah. <laughs> so this song is as popular in yeah, Africa as you it know, is uh, all right, on this side? Look here, um, I am not popular as Jabooks. The yeah. song is popular. The, you know, the song bigger than you. The song is very much bigger than me, man. Yeah. Yes, I. Okay, some will say you're a one-hit wonder, and I suppose it's because of the size of this record. How do you respond to that? When people um, pose them questions to me, I just tell them to go on, on, on YouTube or, or, or just, just, just check out Jabuk's catalog, you know what yes. I mean? Because I have a lot of music, yeah? Mm -hmm. But they just can't get their mind off Angola. Yes. You know what I mean? So. It's a, it's, a, it's a monster, you know. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. So in my view, sometimes it's a disadvantage for the artist when they bust out with a, a song so big, you know. You will always be measured against that record. Right, because um, 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 it happened to me uh, before I, I, I even know how to do promotion, yeah? yeah. And um, I guess no one ever come and, and said, okay, uh, you know, like everyone will bust out of Jamaica, people come and say, yo, you know what? I'm going to manage you, I'm going to take care of you. And, uh, not, don't, not take care of, but I'm going to do some promotion with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was the one have to do all this promotion after and still now. You so you I mean? didn't get the support? You didn't get a team around you and those things? No, I, 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 I think I, 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 I made my own team. So you wanted that, or people weren't in no, interested you know, in working with you? Um, what happened? Um, How so? Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened. You know what I mean? It just happened that no one was interested in working with me at that time, yeah? So I with just such a did. big monster song? Well, I don't know if I'm, if I, if I'm an ugly face, I do it where people just see come me on the spray of me. And no, <laughs> come on. Real, that's, that's interesting because, wow. Oh, I did things here and there with, 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 with some other um, promoters, with some other producers, mm -hmm. but um, everyone just, just um, depending on Angola, you know what I mean? So they don't do the promotion they're supposed to do and the song that they advise for themselves, yeah? They just depend on Angola because, yes, Angola is a big hit, so anything what your books do after that, it's going to be hit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, you have to do promotion. I hope you have learned a thing or two for yourself about I've learned, the business I've, of music, right? I've learned, I've learned, yeah, I've learned a couple. Yes, so you can, you can manage your own affairs now? Or you can instruct mm -hmm. okay. people? Yeah, I can instruct. But people on, on how to manage you? Yeah. Yeah. And, how, and how you're going to move forward. Yeah. 
So what's changed now for you, though? I'm just be, I, I, I just be doing some, 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 some community projects right now. Yeah. And definitely, I have this tour coming up in, in the UK. Well, it's a club tour. And, and in and around Europe, June coming. Yeah, and it's going to be like for five months. And basically, I have this new song right now where yeah. um, I have to big up live MB music because these hydrants, good hydrants for work with, man. So I never have anyone to work with in a them time. Then now I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing big things with these. Um, so they're based where? They're based in the UK. UK. Yeah. So you spend a lot of time in the UK, aren't you? Ah, uh, yes. I spend a couple of time in the UK. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have the video for that song, right? Yes. So all right, let's go to it, right? Nice, nice. When the selector play the music and the patrons and the dance were feeling sweet, them cannot refuse it. If I mentor, if I scat, if I hip hop, if I jazz, if I rock and if I blues it. All right, so that's where he is right now. Jabbooks, reggae revolution. Wow. So, sir, yeah, that is a reggae tune there. Getting love? Yes, a lot of love. Eh? Yes, I am. Yeah. Locally or, or overseas? Locally, internationally, yeah. So, is this going to be a part of a bigger project, this, this record? An album well, coming? Mm, well, I, I think I'll, I'll be doing a hippie um, soon still. Okay, you're working um, on it. Really, a album. All right, so, well, my brethren, it's good to see you. Give thanks, first of all. You're still see? in the game, yes, we see, and you know, we, we hope you'll find a team that you yes, can work with. Yes, sir. And I want to tell people um, um, in and around St. Thomas, them can come out to this. Um, um, you, have, you have a school in, in Lysa, yes. that's um, Rainbow, I think. So they will be having a, 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 um, a fundraising at the school uh, on the 24th of this month. So there they can come out and just come, come show the support, you know what I mean? Okay. I'll give thanks first of all. Right. So, yeah, man. Because yeah. St. Thomas is right. St. Thomas. St. Thomas, I get serious yes. now music now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There you have him in this segment, Jabug. And uh, still to come right here on stage, Rocksteady legend, Ken Boog. Wow. No matter what they say or do, yeah. we'll see you through. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. After 54 years in the business and over 30 albums, Ken Booth now talks iconic musical journey. That's the title of the Rocksteady Icons biography as told by biographer Carl Larmont. Both are on our stage right now. Ken, sir. Yeah, my man probably calling him because I, boy, I don't know, but I'm seeing it for a long way, I know kind of. <laughs> oh, come on, Ken. Okay, no, no, it's a no. pleasure being in, being in your presence. Oh, it's okay, your okay presence. sir. Welcome. Yeah, Good to have much. you. Legendary oh. Ken. Carl. Thank, thank you, thank you thank very you. much. Welcome, sir. All right, Ken. So talk about this journey for us. This, this, why did you want to sit down now for a biography? You know, Mr. and Mrs. Lawman, they're the one who actually called me about this book. And oh. so they want me to, to illustrate. My the Lamas, part they, of my journey. Yeah, they, yeah. They've been vaguely into yeah. it. <laughs> and I want to thank them so much. Yes. You know, because um, 54 years in this business. Yes. My journey, my musical journey, as you know, music, it has its, its ups and downs, mm. but I enjoy all of it. Music is not an easy journey, in other words. And my journey took me to the stage, you know, where I'm still alive and well. Mm -hmm. you know, and, um, As usual. Yeah, not, thank, not thank God for in, that. Thank in, God in for decades. That. Much, <laughs> not much. Yeah. But Mr. Lawman and Mrs. Lawman, you know, I, I really appreciate what they are doing. Because nothing lasts forever. Yes. You know, I just don't say there was salvation. And, and a book is like, is like a song to me. Yes. It's information. 
And, um, and as I say, I'm glad that I'm alive as a witness now. Because the, the next generation to come and the other generation, they, they, they probably will, will pass by somewhere and, and, and see this book. Mm -hmm. you know, and I want to look at it as something. So that's, that's how I look at it, you know, yes. that it would go down generation after generation. Absolutely. It's, it's like music, because music, music is, is, is like food, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like good tasting food. Just like a book. Yes. Yeah, some people when they read a book, it's like they can't stop reading because the story is so authentic and, and real. You know, so I'm I'm really thankful for this. Okay. And my friends who's not here anymore, I was just saying to Mrs. Lawman to, to do something and Dennis Brown, Janon, because every one of us have our own journey and all of us have something to say. Of, of course. Pertaining to the to this music business, you know. So, yeah. Carl, mm -hmm. your perspective, your, your motivation for doing it? Wow, well, um, it's a matter of preserving the history of our legends because we have seen so many people pass on who have done a lot towards the industry, but there is no real history of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a lot of history on Bob, but Bob alone is not reggae music. Okay. You know, so that's what this is aimed at, preserving these histories from an authentic standpoint, not just after they are gone, we put this together, but to get their input in it along the way. <laughs> Okay, so was it, so how willing was Ken to do this when you, when you approached him? How, how did that happen? Ken what was happened? pretty willing, you know, to do this. Um, it was pretty interesting to him um, from the inception. So we discussed it and, and we sat, sat down, started to do the recordings and mm -hmm. typeset it and that was it, you know. We started going through the history. I did some research on some other things, make sure the story is authentic and that's what we did. And, and what I spoke about is, is the truth. Mm -hmm. It's my experience, you know, with this journey, my yes. journey. It's my experience, and I, I spoke about people who, who assist me along the way, you know, because it's not a one-man thing, you know. Mm -hmm. my, my wife, even Babs Grange, the Minister of, 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 of Culture, mm -hmm. she, she had done a lot for me, you know, so I could be what I am, and Sir Coxon, mm -hmm. as you know, she was the one. You know, I, I, usually I don't put too much emphasis on the bad part of music business. I love to talk about the good part. Oh, good. That is what makes I am here right now in your yes. presence. You know, so I'm, I, I just thank God that people like Ms, Ms, Mrs. Lama and Mr. Lama and that they, they, they see where it, 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 it's important for artists to be remembered, not just by the music alone, mm -hmm. but by uh, the book, a book. You know, and, and I always say you know, that we all are compatible, you know. You know, the singers and players of instruments, the TV personality like yourself, the radio personalities, mm -hmm. the media, I mean, like, I mean, being a company and all these other places who give out information. And, but I'm just glad that, that I am here as a witness and alive. Because most of my friends are, are not here anymore. And we guys yes. took this journey and, and, now we, and now the music becomes universal. Um, Carl, you're Rob. Uh, what, 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 what's your standout in there in your research for this book? Mm. What stood out most to me was uh, Mr. Boo's first trip, overseas trip. He was 19 years old. Pretty much the same thing what is happening today with the young generation of musicians. Um, this man had a number one song on the British charts in the UK when he was like 24 years old. 25. 25 mm -hmm. years old. And 25, yes. 25. And that's, that's very powerful. But um, what we tend to real miss is that the young people today are doing the same thing. And he got the same kind of fights as a young person gets today because Mr. Boot will tell you himself that, you know, people didn't want him to be the one who having this hit song in, in the UK. Yeah. There was a lot of racial tension in You're this right. time, so it was, it was, it was a very interesting part of, of the, uh, yes. the research. Because that Se was Mr. Mr. Um, Mr. That Norman. was what year again, Ken? 74. 74. 74. 74. Yeah. And the song is Everything, Everything I, I Own. I own. Yes. I, I, you know, it I turned was, you into I, a rock star in the UK. I was so privileged, but um, at the same time, we were mm. like some, some country boys, you know, coming out of Jamaica, you know? And then when, when the record company said to you that this man is going to manage you, going to be a manager, I didn't know that racism 
involved in music is long after I realized that because I had, I had Carnegie had sold out, you know, while I had um, everything I own, number one in England. Yes. And, and the guy that were managing me at the, moment, at the time, he didn't want me to go. And then some people sat down with me and, and talked to me and said, you see, do, he, he, he had a lot of artists, you know, that he, he manages, you know? Mm. And for me, you know, I didn't want to talk really about no colour, because colour is not the answer. But that's how those people were thinking at the moment, that probably this little guy just come and us get Carnegie Hall to perform in one. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it barred me from getting that privilege, you know, so. There are still boundaries that will come before you because of the color of your skin, even now you're saying. Yeah, um, but um, I think the new generation, not dealing with racism, as probably the generation before them. It's not so intense. No, anymore. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I always talk about with my audience is about color. Because you, you, you're seeing people from different culture you know, different places, different shades of color. You know, so I always explain, I try to say that, well, color is not the answer because we all share the same day-to-day -day problems, mm -hmm. the same day-to-day -day grief. Why should color be the answer? I think we, the people, are the answer. So this is, I, I don't just go on stage and sing, but try to bring people in a oneness, no matter what color you are. Your moment, Ken, what are, what are some of the moments standing out in your head right now in that 54-year journey? Shaggy with Shaggy. Um, stop that train. Yeah, yeah. Money train. I don't know the money train is, it, is yeah. That to mention, really, because in Europe, people love the music so much, you know, and, and they appreciate what we are doing so much that I have to say yes to, to Europe. I have to say yes to Japan. Because that is another experience that again. Mm -hmm. so, and you're still being called everywhere, Ken. You're still very busy, aren't you? You know, I'm 71 years old, you know. Yes. And I'm, I'm still occupied when you come to show business. Cause I'm, I'm going on tour now in June. In June. And I've done that every year. Every year you're yes, out there doing I'm a going, tour somewhere. Just Where are you going this time? Europe? Every year I go to Europe. Yes. But I just finished doing um, eight shows in Europe and six in Japan. Oh. 14. <laughs> wow. One of the things that, that kept Jamaican artists going mm -hmm. is traveling out of Jamaica because you don't earn as, as you're earning when you're doing a tour. And, and as a part of the business, you know, we have to survive. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm really thankful for, for these places that, and at the same time, you get experience. Because I've done been, some countries I've never been before, and, and, and I, I always, um, um, research the culture too. Anywhere I go to, I research the culture. Nice. Yeah, can you know? So you're still enjoying life, exploring Ken, and can't and a, wait and a, to get on the next and a stage. And family man. <laughs> family man. Yes. And how is but your wife? Is she these good? Two wife again. is okay? Yeah, she's all right, she's all right. Nice. I didn't know we, we, we're going up. We, we, we're not that young anymore now. Um, but I'm fit. We're very fit. So I see. Yes, but I'm, 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 I don't tell lie and age and all them things. Eh? Because yeah. I can't stop that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you could pass but many the, But the most experienced that I've, I've, I've you know, yeah. experienced teacher to wisdom, you know, so. Cool. Yeah, so, so what's in the book now, Carl? What's in the book? Break it down for us. Well, the book takes you um, throughout Ken's life, his journey, its his musical journey starting in Denham Town until, yes. until he's on stage here today. Um, he speaks about going on tour next month. After that, he comes back and then um, there's Brazil on the agenda. So he's very active. So it takes you through his life, through the early stages. Mm -hmm. um, the he's bridging them, John Wood them, the whole yes, of that, the rock steady the whalers, era. It takes you through the whalers at Studio One, sitting there chilling, making songs. It takes you through the hard times, the ups, the downs, mm -hmm. the trials, the tribulations, the closed doors, the open doors, the competition, the walking yes. from dance yes. to dance. Yes. You know, this was the days when there, if you were if you had a song, it was on a Studio One label. The only song that had the song was Studio One. Yes. Right. right? So like a dub plate. That dub plate. So you had to be walking to these dances. This is the day before we had cars and bikes and all these things. So it takes you through Kicken's journey as an aspiring musician to becoming a superstar. Ken, come to think of it, you know, because you were a, 
in the, in the context of the UK, you were a big number one artist on the BBC One, mm -hmm. Radio One chart, right? In America. And you hit America as well. And that was 1974, which means that you would have been one of the first to, 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 to gain international Recognition, recording artist yeah. status from Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. I think Jimmy Cliff was before you? Yes, and Desmond Decker. And Desmond Decker. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and some people don't even know who is De Desmond Decker. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And there was Millie Small. And then you have Jackie Edwards. Jackie Edwards, who Millie did Small. Yesterday. And he sold a million in America, got number one. Same. And all of you were, the, it's like the UK served as a gateway, wasn't it? Oh, yes. They, they were on to you first. England is the first place that have embraced Jamaican music. Yes. And, I'm, and we must give thanks for that. Yeah. That some of the artists migrated to England. Yeah. When they see that, that, that way where they, they can get more acceptance. And, yes. You know, when I had everything I wanted, Bob Marley called me. Mm -hmm. Because all of us his friends, you know. He called me and he said, Bood. Because that time, that time, Chris Buck was never ready for him yet, you know. You know, a lot of things that note of me and John Holt married, you know. Mm -hmm. John Holt. Because I had the number one song and I had the number seven song. Yes. So the world were, 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 were looking at us, if, 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 you know? And, um, but, you know... So what I, did Bob I, say to you? He said, boo, you know what I mean? We you know the chart, because the whole of his friends, you know? Mm. So anything nice on each other. Yeah. We just come there were, and come there were more and unity, and wasn't there? Oh, my God. They were, even Bob with me, you know? Yeah. And when the married to retire, you know, the whole of us got me there, I was... We, Gay lads, Aria Sandy, Hep you name tunes. it, the whole of the hip tones, right where, where they call jungle you now, mm -hmm. on the garden. That's where Rita used to live. And we used to, we used to walk together. Yes. And then we branch out. So the, yeah. all of these iconic individuals would be often seen in that part of town. Oh. Just I, walking I, I, around. We used to walk together. People yeah. stop on the street. And so they sing something, you know. And the whole of us just go one side and plan a thing. Yes. And, and harmonize like... Yeah, harmonize that, you know. And yeah. Plan who are going to lead it and all them things. <laughs> it was a good experience. Wow. Although financially it weren't like, no. Same. I have nothing to fight this generation about, because it's music. Yes. You know, but what, what I don't like sometimes about it is the raggedy kind of things and vulgar things. Mm. And music is love. Music is the ultimate. You don't go on stage and fight. It's music, you know. Yes. It's supposed to bring people together. So these are little things that I really don't admire, but there's so many great singers now, just like in our time. I'm not fighting no generation. You know what I, I say, that. Ken? You know what I say? And I'm, I'm glad you're here. I don't want to repeat it now. Because I believe that if we're going to sing about um, violence, there are people in the world who can do it better than us. So on a commercial level, yes. we would not be successful, the most successful. In fact, if that was what you guys were embracing mm -hmm. in the 60s, 70s, the music couldn't be very It wouldn't. Yeah. It was the love. To this day, the, the world is in awe about how, given our history, can our slave history and the abuse and the poverty that we've endured, for us to be talking so much about love, it just blew the world away. Yeah, and we have to also live love. Yeah, I'm not perfect, you know. But so, we have to leave these things also. One so of the, key things the, the violence, the violence now I sell, but one there's the no commercial things. success to be gained from no singing panic, no, violence. No, no. Can people in the world can do violence better than us? <laughs> when you put the calypso on them, <laughs> when you sing something, you know, it's like this, you know, but you have to play it, you know, because it, <laughs> <laughs> directly I tell you what, it, what it, I know, so. Yeah, man, but anyway, yeah, you're saying, The thing that was so interesting with this entire um, research was that you just, well, you just mentioned it in a different kind of way, was that most of these, the foundation of the music came from Trenchtown, from, from a place that it shouldn't come from to have such an impact on the world. Yes. You know, this is the underbelly of society, so yeah, to speak. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, this is where nothing good is supposed to come from. Like Christ. You know, People who mm -hmm. had... All the excuse in the world mm -hmm. to be angry mm -hmm. and to abandon the world. Exactly. Okay, because of their experience, exactly. their slave experience, exactly. their, the abuse that they get in the world, yeah. and the unfairness in how the society, even post slavery, mm -hmm. was structured. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they had reasons to be angry. And this was colonial. And they Jamaica were too. singing love. 
This was Colonial yeah. Jamaica. We have all the reasons to be angry. I still still was singing angry, love. Yes. Singing about love yeah, for yeah, all. Yeah, I understand for, clearly, for, yes. play, for people in places yeah. you've never been. Because, for instance, Wilfred, Wilfred, right? you know that most of the songs we sing, we guys, that people love now, me singing on stage still. We recorded this song on Hungry Belly, you know. Because when I woke up in the morning, it's government town, so I grew up in Denham town. I scaled Calabar while I don't drink no tea. Go to the studio, sit down the whole day and I wait for the circus and say, my time. Wow. When I say my time, my, my belly filled with joy. I'm moving around and I pop it on a string, the way them sang, they appear on the belly song, them, you know. Whoa. But the joy to know that you're going to do something that you love and want to do. Tell me about the world's fear song that you and um, Strainer I mean, started. Strainer, because I started out with Strainer doing it as a Jew, you know. Yeah. We, we, we didn't even fly flew into a plane. <laughs> and the, the, the world's fear was going on in 1966. And me and Strainer can just sit down and, and, and write a song about a situation. So we right, we wrote, Took my girl to the world's fear And let her choose all she needs there Now you choose And we never even go there, we never even, we not even not sure up on them time there. Mm. And we had to do song as if we go there in a... You know. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Oh, my. And even Artie Bella, you know, is an Indian program, you know. Every Sunday used to come over, you know. Artie Bella, you know, like, mm -hmm. if you listen to Artie Bella, good, you know, it's an Indian song. Is the melody I use, you know? I'm going to say, Artibella, my pretty little darling, please come. You know, um, I was watching Steve one day in an interview, and he said that a lot of songs, him, him take it, him to, he took it from other melodies. So no man, no man in this world where I'm alone, he said, melody, if you, don't, if you don't catch that one, pass on to another person. Because it's coming out of the atmosphere, so <laughs> in the middle of the way. <laughs> but you know, but the thank God for this moment with you, do. Oh, thank we God. Really and, and, and Mr. Uh, Lawman and Thank Man God Man for you, and Ken, and this moment, and thank you too. Because I said nothing lasts forever. And yeah. this book, you know, it, 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 it's doing a lot right now from where my career is concerned. Okay. Because people used to be, to be forgotten, you know. Because I'm going to memory alone. Memories don't live like people do. Mm -hmm. When a man dies, you don't remember so much about him as if he's alive. So I'm a witness now. Yeah. I'm glad that I'm alive. That in time I leave, I can't tell them why. So I say, I'll book come out, I'll phone the name and I do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Tom's really your wife again, you know? Yeah, Ken, don't yeah. talk about dying, sir, because you're not going anywhere in time soon. This book is out there for you to get. And the, the, the 26th is the launch. The 26th of May it is, is the, the official launch, launch the of official it. official launch. So line up for it. My iconic journey. And we're talking about a journey for over 54 years in music. The legendary Ken Booth. And you, and this is a part of my journey too, you know, having this interview with you. With Winford Williams? Of course, you <laughs> mean. <laughs> well, I will take the inspiration, sir. I, I welcome the inspiration. I don't want to do I'm always inspired series. by you guys anyway. What you are doing for music right now, mm -hmm. right? You, you, couldn't, you couldn't done better. But you, you're making the, the, the music international. This program is international, you know. Can you watch this program on the internet, you know? Yeah. You understand, so. Thank you very much. Man, cool is a car. Make me think we don't trim my talk to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, Ken. Okay. Thank you so very yeah, much, welcome, sir. Welcome. Carl, thank you. Thank you. Blessed, blessed, blessed love, sir. Congrats, Congrats on the work. Thank you. Keep sir. up the good and work. And thanks to the camera crew, everybody. Okay. All right, so that's our show for this week. Winford Williams, on behalf of all of us, thanking you for joining us. Do join us again next week for more on stage. All right, thanks for watching our video. You know what to do. Click, subscribe, and be on our stage always.